In this video, I'll show you how to connect to your Sonic Pad remotely using a web browser on a computer or smartphone on the same network. I'll not only show you how to remotely connect to your Sonic Pad and 3D printer, but I'll also show you what you can do from the web UI or user interface. This is the fourth video in the Sonic Pad Basics series, and you can find the other videos in the description below. The first thing you need to do to be able to remotely connect to your Sonic Pad is find its IP address. The easiest way to do this is to navigate to network settings on your Sonic Pad, which can be found on the configure page. Select either wireless or wired network, depending on how your Sonic Pad is connected. Here you will see your IP address. Make a note of what it says. Now, on your computer or phone, open up a web browser and type in the Sonic Pad's IP address in the address bar without anything else and hit enter. Your web browser should now display the Sonic Pad's web user interface. From here, you are able to fully control your Sonic Pad and therefore your 3D printer. Before we go much further, there's a couple of things that I'd advise doing to make connecting to your Sonic Pad easier next time. First, give your Sonic Pad a static IP address in your network's router. If you don't know how to do this, then Google how it's done on your specific router. There's no way I could give a detailed guide on every router. It is usually a very simple process though. Once you've done this, you can save your Sonic Pad's IP address as a bookmark in your browser, or even have it as a desktop shortcut so that you can access your Sonic Pad quicker. Without doing this, the Sonic Pad's IP address will likely change every time it's restarted, and you'll have to do this process every time. Also, you won't be able to connect to your Sonic Pad outside your home network without a bit more work. The only real safe way to do this is to use something like Google's Chrome Remote Desktop to remote into a computer that is on the same network as your Sonic Pad, or to set up a VPN for safe access. Please don't port forward though, it's not safe. So now we're set up and looking at the web UI, what can we do? Well, you can do pretty much everything on the web UI that you can do on the Sonic Pad itself. Things are just in a slightly different place. On the left hand side, there are a number of tabs for different pages. And across the top, we have an emergency stop button, a notifications bell, user menu, and a menu where you can manage printers and adjust the dashboard layout of the web UI if you want to change it. On the standard dashboard, you can see the printer status, control movements, and headline print settings. When a print is running, you can see live information about its progress. You can select different pre-configured macros, controlling your fans, print speeds, and temperature settings. There's a console where you can send and monitor all commands, and a file list that shows you all print files saved to your Sonic Pad. There's also a G-code preview section that lets you run through how the G-code will instruct your printer to complete the selected print. On the left, we also have the console and file list again, and then history. In the history tab, you can see some printer statistics for all print jobs performed using your Sonic Pad. You can see how many things you've printed, how long they've taken, how much of that time was actually printing, and the amount of filament used. Below this, you can see stats for each individual model that you've printed. The time-lapse tab has settings for setting up time-lapse videos, which we'll look into when we connect a camera. In the Tune tab, you can see more detailed information about your bed mesh, as well as change some settings for how the mesh is taken. The Configuration tab shows all of the background configuration files that the Sonic Pad uses to store all of the different settings. Further down, you can see any other files that are on your Sonic Pad, including log files, as well as example config files. The System tab gives you system information about your Sonic Pad, including how much space there is left and how the system resources are being used. The Settings tab has a whole host of settings where you can change the way Clipper, the firmware your Sonic Pad uses, looks and behaves. Once we have a camera installed, we'll also be able to view your printer live via the web UI. If you want to see how to quickly connect a camera to your Sonic Pad so that you can view your printer from afar as well as create time-lapse videos, then click here. Or if you'd rather skip to tuning your printer and Sonic Pad for best speed and quality, then click here to start the Intermediate Sonic Pad series. I'll see you there.